Well, first, let's explain what the Tea Party is. And I, I did a show on that previously. And um, it's, it started off as a legitimate grassroots movement that eventually got hijacked by um, the established Republican Party and basically used as a tool to help further, you know, like the, the agenda of corporations, basically. And um, the thing that separates the Tea Party from the mainstream established uh, Republican Party is they have extreme policies. You know, like these are the people who believe that um, Barack Obama is Kenyan. You know, he's a radical Muslim and a, um, you know, a, a, what they call it, a um, black liberation theology Christian and a radical Muslim at the same time. You know, they they call them birthers, where they don't believe that he has a legitimate birth certificate, and um, you know, stuff like that. Right. Amongst other things, they have radical viewpoints when it comes to um, birth control. You know, the woman's rights. They have radical viewpoints when it comes to homosexuality and people's right to choose their sexual preference. Um. They are basically fringe candidates, people that sit at the far extreme of the mainstream. And so I started thinking about it, and I said, wait a minute. We have something in our community that's behaving very similar to the to the Tea Party. If you look at our community as a whole, you'll see we have, just like any other political makeup of any of, of any culture, you have people who are on the left, more liberal, you have people that's on the right, more conservative, and then you have people who are moderates, independents, swing voters, mm -hmm. people who can go either way depending upon who is presenting a rational, sane argument. You right. know, they could be swung either way. They can go Democrat, they can go Republican, they can go left, they can go right. And, you know, you can change the titles, you know, like you can change it from left, right, liberal, you know, Republican, whatever. But basically the, the concept remains the same. You have left, you have the right, and you got the middle. So where does the conscious community fit in that paradigm? And from what everything that I can see, they tend to be on the far right of mainstream African culture. Right. I mean, would you agree with that assessment? Absolutely. Absolutely. They, they, they're extremists, you know, and they're extremists in a, in a, in, in a dangerous way, but yet in a way that it undermines, because those extreme groups are really, they undermine rational thought and, and, and rational steps toward progress. You know, and that's what they're, and that's what they're, they're designed to do. You know, they're, they're provocateurs to a reality that we're trying to transcend. We're trying to get beyond, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, these 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 are uh, you know marginalized categories. We're looking at it on a global, holistic level, and and they're not. Right. They're not. And, and, that's, and a, that's, a that's the point that I really wanted to make with this whole um, show is, if we are part of the African centered community and the quote unquote conscious community, as they say. Um, what is it exactly that we're trying to do in relationship to the rest of our culture, the people that exist within our culture, people who are not African-centered, people who don't believe in the things that we believe in, um, but not necessarily against it either. You know what I mean? Right. People who don't really have any, um, you know, enough knowledge about it, who, who probably haven't been in the right circles where they can be influenced by this type of information, or maybe they just have a negative experience with the type of people that we're talking about, and now they decided to, you know, screw the conscious community, screw african centered consciousness, and I'm just going to do me. Right. There's a lot of that. You know. They're the, reason, they're the, they're the barrier. It's almost like with the old 5% lessons, the 10%, that they're, they're keeping that you know the 85 from reaching or from the 5 percent reaching the 85 percent they stand in the middle they're the buffer right 
Now, I had um, presented something um, on Facebook. I had posted a status message saying that if you want to have appeal to the masses or get more numbers in terms of the message that you're sending out to people, because um, we are sending a message. You know, like if you're in the African Senate community, you are preaching. You're preaching to people. We're doing these shows because we're trying to reach people. Um, so you're trying to get more people recruited into your way of thinking so we can move on that way of thinking. Now, if you're going to do that, the best approach that you should have when it comes to that is you should have a, a Big Ten approach, meaning I wouldn't stick, you should kind of stay away from social issues, stay away from religion, and stay away from the main things that divide us and concentrate more on the common um the things that we have in common, the common denominator, the things that affect us all. Right. Like me and you were talking about this before, and I asked the question, if you are a Muslim, can that kufi be slapped off your head by the cops? Yes. If you are a Hebrew Israelite, will they have your karate suit on the ground stomping you out? If you yes. The police. Yes. You know, if you are a Christian, or yeah, if you're a Christian, can they snatch your cross off your neck and slap the shit out of you? That's if right. you are someone who practices traditional African religion or whatever, or, or you're into the comedic science, can they take your arm and shove it up your ass? Yes. So I think... Once we start seeing, oh, let's let's go, let's continue. If you're a homosexual, brother, are you immune from having the cops fucking with you? No. Violate you're your right, you're more. you down. You, you, can you yeah, get your more? Can you, can you get your fez slapped off your head? You see, that's what I'm so talking about. When you, when you really break it down, son. <laughs> But we look at and we look at all of these things that affect all of us. We all have a lot in common. We have a lot more than we have differences. So I was instead just, of concentrating, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. No, no. Instead of concentrating on our differences, we should be concentrating. I was just as funny that today I took my I took my um my kids to the park and there was some Hebrew there was some Hebrew Israelite brothers and, and they had their family out there and these were a different set of Hebrew Israelites than the ones that's on, that was on 42nd Street, you know, and then we mm -hmm. were talking and I got a chance to speak to their elder that was there and, um, you know, we, told, we talked about Kemet, their, their views on it, and, you know, we didn't agree, but we left in peace, shalom, Get everybody a pound, it was all love, I even invited right. him to, to the show, to come on the show and he can express his ideas, you know what I mean, that's what it's about, right. I said we, at the end of the day, we are family, you know what I mean, the Moors, the more science temple, the, the nation of gods and earth, you know, uh, they're not our enemies. We said that from the beginning. Right. You know, you got a lot of people, you got a lot of people that's using uh, these divisive tactics and being uh, provocateurs and, and, and antagonists. And they're the problem. They're the ones that's keeping us from unifying. Right. And I want to be clear. Um, we all, I mean, I'm, I know, and, and I, I definitely rail on the Christian mentality. I rail on the Islamic uh, mentality. I rail, but at the end of the day, I don't, I don't have this line in the sand where we can't meet as brothers to discuss something that's a common denominator. Right. I don't have that line in the sand, and I actually appreciate the dialogue or the differences because there's a lot of things that I feel. And, I, and not just me, I feel like a lot of people feel that we need to clarify ideologies in order for us to move forward or whatever. But it's very important that people understand that there's not going to be some monolithic mindset that our people are going to adopt before we should move on to nation or to move on to organization. It doesn't work that way. What right. you have to move off of is common goals, common principles, things that affect us all. And when you look at the big picture, from that level, um, you find it to be a lot less divisive 